Uh, what's your opinion on uh, gun violence in general? Uh, well, we could start with gun-free zones. Do you think gun-free zones work? The, yeah, I mean, if you get the guns out of some place, people aren't going to get killed. Well, you could say then, uh, what do you think about the, uh, the argument, though, that uh, that was a gun-free zone right down in Florida? Uh, the Aurora movie shootings was also a gun-free zone. The Orlando nightclub, Pulse nightclub in Florida also was a gun-free zone. And it seems to be that... Well, the only they, sure, they sure weren't gun-free zones after the guy arrived. Yeah, it seems to be the gun-free and, zone. And seems all, all the bad guns start out as legal good guns. And some so-called good guys got the gun and it gets in the hand and either he goes bad or the gun gets in somebody else's hands and somebody gets killed. Right, so, so these bad guys seem to find a way to still break the laws to get guns. Yeah, because there's so many legal guns around. So then, why then punish everyone else who would be law-abiding? Not for punishing anybody. Right, because then uh, gun-free zones punishes them, so it means they can't defend themselves. Well, I you know? think that having a gun is an extreme responsibility. Yeah. And in particular, you ought to have insurance that would pay anybody that got hurt by the gun. And you ought to be responsible after that gun gets stolen for what happens when somebody takes it and uses it illegally to shoot somebody. So if I were to steal your property or steal your car and run over somebody, would you be responsible for that? My car is not designed as a killing machine. But people have people you know, if used you, them if you, as killing machines. If you machines, steal yeah. dynamite and blow somebody up, yeah. the people who had the dynamite will be responsible. It ought to be like that for guns. Right, so you say then, um, if somebody steal my gun, or it's no longer my yeah. possession, right? I mean, what, you can turn pretty much anything into a weapon, right? Yeah. People will use like guns yeah. as home self-defense. Uh, you could say that... Well, uh, self-defense is mostly a joke. Why is People that? have them because they think that uh, guns make them more powerful, or because guns are fun. Guns are fun. Makes it equal, they're fun, but they're dangerous. Don't you think it makes it an equal level playing field for all people, regardless of their sex? For, no. Like, women too, I, I, that I they think won't be, what, uh, they, what they do is they convert some something that's not so dangerous, like an ordinary robbery, into a gunfight where somebody gets killed. And either side can get killed. And if I'm on the street and somebody's robbing me, I don't want some good guy with a gun to come and convert that into a gunfight. And then I get shot as a bystander. Maybe I get shot because now that now that it's desperate, the, the guy who was robbing me pulls out a gun and shoots me, whereas before, all I'd have to do is get new credit cards. Now I get buried. Yeah, and, and maybe if, there, if you had a, a gun on you, if it wasn't so hard, right? Then, then, I'd, then, then I'd really gun. likely get killed you'd, you'd if I was stupid yourself, enough to right? bring it out. No, I wouldn't bring it out. That'd be the worst time to bring a gun out. Don't you think, uh, you know, there's a group of people that were registered and then laws were passed against them from prohibiting them from having ammo and ammunition and guns to the Jews. Don't you think they would have fared better if they were well armed instead of disarmed? That was an entire gun-free zone for that populace. I'm not sure who you're talking about. The Jews during uh, Germany, they made laws saying that they cannot have guns, they cannot protect themselves with oh, firearms, I, I, and they I were think, targeted I think easily. The, I think the Germans would have acted against them even faster and used bigger weapons Did, and, and wiped out uh, even more people. So you think because they have better weapons, they could have maybe take them out? But you know, in Vietnam, those rice farmers didn't have better weapons. They were just farmers, and they were able to kind of stop yeah, the whole well, entire a whole contingent of, of superior firearms. Oh, no, that, that, that was extremely rare that that kind of right. thing happened. So I think maybe maybe the Jews could have stood a chance where they armed instead did of being ever, sent you ever to read uh, the, history? the Holocaust. Did you ever read the history of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising? If they'd have had guns, all that would have happened is a lot of other additional innocent people would have been killed. Because the Germans ended up with heavy artillery and bombers on them. They would have stand a chance. I mean, leave it to them to decide their own fate and how they want to choose to defend They'd themselves. They'd be deciding the fate of everyone so, around so them. So instead of an armed resistance, march quietly into the yeah. trains to yeah. their camp, to their doom. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They, they, they should resist, but, should resist, but right? guns would not be helpful in that. Guns would just give the other side an excuse to bring in even heavier weapons. And I can tell you, the Germans had a lot heavier weapons than, but I just made an than any that, of their uh, opponents could have come up with. And, 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 and in the same vein, 
the United States had more superior weapons and, uh, and, and helicopters and all these sort of uh, bombs in Vietnam and still they could not defeat rice paddy uh, enemies. But they killed right? a lot of people trying. And they killed a lot of Americans trying to wipe them out and they yeah. couldn't. And don't you think then maybe the uh, Jews could have done the same thing, at least uh, not to the extent of them being nearly massacred. To the, oh, to the I think that's a, to that's a total joke. You know, when I... When I was a kid, I used to brag about, oh, I can get in a fight and beat so-and-so. And my dad said to me, he said, look, you don't want to get in a fight because the guy you're fighting against probably doesn't care if he gets his teeth kicked in. And you care. That's enough disadvantage right there that it's stupid to get in a fight. Yeah, homicide rates have been declining steadily uh, over the past yeah. uh, decade or so. Um, I've never really been in a fight, uh, you know, physical confrontation in the past decade myself. I've, well, you know, you're, you're right? lucky. You're yeah. lucky about that. I, I and if you do, I hope you don't have a gun because that can get you killed. Well, most deaths, of all the deaths here in the United States, when you add up the numbers, right, gun violence account for 0.6% uh, of deaths, right? When you add up people actually dying. In the United States, when you add no, up, you're not counting suicide. Yeah, you're having, suicide you're having, yeah, people. Suicide men are more, counts. More, men are more efficient at killing this. Which is yeah, you, you have guns around, people shoot themselves. Sixty percent of gun deaths are suicide. That's so right. right. That's so about right. Remember that route, right? That's right. About so, right. So, so that's another reason not to have a gun. So around. about what? Uh, Ten, you, thirteen thousand people. Yeah. When you, when you have 310 million people in this country, then yeah. when you divide the number of deaths, that only adds up to affects point zero 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 zero. 4% of the population. Then how come by the time I get to this age, there's at least a half a dozen and maybe more people that have died from guns in, for independent reasons, just at random? Yes, yeah, so it's interesting. So you find like, let's look the, at mass the shootings. The people that before, have been in my life, and none yeah. of them were mass shootings. But before, before uh, gun-free zones, there was like yeah. maybe a little over 200 mass shooting events. After gun-free zones came into existence a few decades ago, oh, we there's had always uh, double been, that amount. There's right? always been places where people aren't allowed to carry guns. But what do we look at? And, uh, and those, in general, are the places where they don't get shot so much. Right, and places so like, we would want guns. People would have like protecting the the president. Do you have cops here and this presence here? We go to uh, some nightclubs. Bouncers have weapons. You have um, banks to have guns. If why you, is it? Why, oh, I'm sorry. Why, why is it that these places that we view as very important? can't protect themselves, but why not schools to protect, you know, the most precious of, of, of all of that would be children. Why not protect armed protections, armed teachers? Well, if, if you wanted to have people who were safe with guns, they need to be wearing uniforms, and they need to have supervisors, and they need a lot more training than we give anyone today, and that's really expensive. And if we're going to do that, we need to pay for it with a tax on guns. Tax on guns. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of volunteers. I mean, you have a lot of volunteer people, like you have uh, veterans to come out to be happy to volunteer. Right? They you don't have. have uh, they don't have that kind of training. They don't have that kind of training. No, I live in Maryland. I was in the Army 50 years ago. I'm exempt from any training if I apply for a carry license. Well, you've, you've That's had the, have, really have you had stupid. The they certainly didn't teach me stuff that was rough. Stuff, right? They taught me how to attack into an ambush. Right. I don't think that's what I need to know to be safe carrying a gun. Well, in you know, maybe, well, maybe that's something that you know, it's, instead of seeking the government to try to solve our problems, which in general they tend to make it worse. Why don't we do a community involvement and do firearm training classes in our community? Right, take it upon ourselves. The government, to find our the government of does begging. lots of jobs well. Like the name one. They run the patent office. The patent office. That's what. That's my. That's my day job. That's their day job. I, I invent things and apply for patents and work with the patent office. Right. And I can tell you, I am amazed at how difficult that job is to you know, examine patents it, and how good a job they do. I don't think patents uh, do a very, very well job in pushing for creativity and technology. All patents do, does is like, well, only I can create it, and you must pay me a royalty because government will come after you if you don't, right? Do you know why the right Actually, brother? what patents do is they publish all of the good ideas so everybody knows about them. But they cannot create them with their own materials. But very rarely do people end up paying an unreasonable amount yeah, to get do you know what the you know what kind of planes the Wright brothers built after the first one? They, they, not really anything. You want to talk about the Wright Brothers, Wright Brothers. patent? Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. can talk about the Wright okay, Brothers yeah, yeah. patent. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. You know, you know one of the lawyers, you, one of you know, the letters. You know what the Wright Brothers patent was? You know what they did with their with their lives right after making that airplane? They went around suing people 
And this entire country, yeah, people in their own yeah, backyards yeah, want to create their own airplanes. I, I know that. I, right. I've been to the Curtis Museum. Yeah, I right. know what Curtis did. Yeah. And Curtis succeeded anyway and eventually ended up merging with him. And the development of airplanes did very well. It stifled innovation here for people to create their own airplanes it with their own wood, with their own material. Air, air, well, they, airplane they development. They sued people, Americans, but in they, their own backyards trying to make their own airplanes. But they didn't win. They didn't get anything. It's, that's all and they it, went, it went on anyway. It was just a lot of storm in a teacup. They ended up merging. When World War I occurred, that's why there's hardly any airplanes here in this country. That's what patents do. Patents is a monopoly on ideas. Yeah. That no one's allowed to yeah. build that copy that idea with their own resources yeah. to build. I think that's kind of wrong. Yeah. You know, if I like your outfit and I go home and copy it, I didn't steal anything from you, yeah. right? If I see an idea and you share it to the world, it's not stealing if I copy it and create yeah. it with my own material. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that's kind of efficient. If patents, but the idea of it is you patent it to kind of boost creativity, and it doesn't. It stifles it. It yeah. stifles innovation. Well, anyway, yeah, thanks, for, thanks for coming by. <laughs> Appreciate it. One, one last question. You said, uh, so do you think that all guns should be eliminated? Throwing it to the ocean? I, I think that what people, people should realistically consider the dangers and advantages of guns in every situation. And if you did that, the number of situations in which the advantages and good things that come out of guns being there outweigh the dangers it would be pretty small. But in those circumstances, the answer is insurance. It's insurance, it's uniforms, it's training, it's supervision. It's not carrying the gun away from the situation where you need it. And it, it would be pretty small. There wouldn't be 300 million guns, there'd be, you know, a couple of percent of that many. You know, people can print guns in their bathtubs now thanks to 3D printers. You can't really stop yeah, them. Yeah, right? but not good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Prohibition didn't really stop anyone from bringing in alcohol, they, right? They, they, can, they, can, they can print extra dangerous guns <laughs> that they can sneak through the uh, detectors, right. but not really a gun anybody would want to use for, for now, anything else. For now. But I like your idea of the insurance thing. Why don't we take that and push it forward, though, and everyone has insurance for themselves in the event that they aggress or initiate violence to another person, regardless if it's guns, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. That would be. But a, that wouldn't. That wouldn't be a good idea. Why would that not be a good idea? That would limit because, cartel. Like, well, I don't well, want to hit you because you sue me, right? Design the kind of insurance that would work for that. Because I've been, I've spent the last several years figuring out what kind of insurance would work well for guns. And one of the things is it has to be attached to the gun, because often the gun isn't shot by its rightful owner when someone gets hurt. So insurance has to cover a particular gun. And insurance needs to pay directly to victims, not to defend the shooters, not liability insurance, but insurance that pays the medical bills. Because one of the big points of insurance is that when someone gets shot and goes to an emergency room, the emergency room has to be confident they're going to get paid so they really take care of them instead of getting them out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. And insurance has to be no fault because in many, many shootings, there's all this dispute about whether the guy that did the shooting, if you can identify him, was really at fault or he had a right to do it, or the guy that got shot may have contributed or didn't contribute. It's a legal hassle for years before it gets settled. And you're not going to take care of anybody unless the insurance pays like no fault insurance. Just like workers' compensation, if you're injured on the job, doesn't matter whether your employer did anything wrong, doesn't matter whether you made a mistake that caused the accident, you get paid for your medical expenses and lost wages. And that's what we need to have for guns. I think uh, it's a good, interesting direction in the event that you commit violence, yeah. right? And I think uh, okay. that's a yeah, good, I think yeah. that's a good You appear, way we you appear to be further. a pro-gun guy. I can say one good thing <laughs> for pro-gun guys about insurance. What's that? It doesn't have to be expensive because guns 
kill a lot of people, but they don't injure that many people. And that's what's expensive for insurance companies. And there's 300 million guns to share the cost. So you do the math, it's not going to be expensive. Except for people with exceptionally high risk, in which case it will be expensive. I wouldn't want the, uh, to be liable if someone stole my gun, though, right? It steals my property. You wouldn't want to be, yeah. but... Because you're guy, saying I'm responsible for them the, taking my, my property. Unless, unless you go crazy, which, you know, I can't predict. Right. The biggest risk your guns, if you own guns, I expect you do or you wouldn't be... But anyway, but if you own guns, the biggest risk your guns have for me is they're going to get out in the hands of somebody who shouldn't have them. And you need to, to protect them. Well, people don't protect them. They leave guns under the seats of their cars. They forget to lock the cars. They leave the guns on top of the toilet tank in a school. So then if somebody else picks up that gun and shoots somebody, that's tragic. And, and the guy that does the shooting probably isn't going to have insurance. And he's not going to pay. He might go to jail, but he's not going to pay. And so the guy who set that up by letting their gun get out should be responsible. No, but there's people, the community pays for that though. You know, they have Kickstarter campaigns, GoFundMe campaigns. They've raised like $400,000 for one of the kid who's in a hospital right now. Ooh, right? Well, you know, it's, so like, uh, yeah, I, I, for one, but not, there's 75,000 people injured by guns. And I just said that was a low number. It is compared to car accidents and workplace accidents, but one Kickstarter campaign, if they cost four hundred thousand dollars each, that's a people do isn't, it. Isn't going, people do yeah, it. But we're gonna if we had seventy-five thousand Kickstarter campaigns, people wouldn't contribute to all of them. I mean, so like, why don't we look at the cause of all this? Because apparently this kid was bullied at school, yeah. right? This kid is like loaded up in all kinds of medications. Uh, there's a lot of people alerting uh, the community, the FBI, even that this guy has problems. It seems like there's uh, like, lots of guys with so problems. There's a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of guys with problems. But it seems like the common denominator for a lot of these guys seems to be very, uh, you know, psychotropic drugs kind of pumped into them, right? It seems to be the environment that they're I, in. They're I don't know about that. In, that's you know? uh, that's before my generation. Well, it, it just seems to me public schools don't seem to be a safe place for kids. When, Not even when, for when I was young, drugs weren't so common. Not so common. Well, I'm saying, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and then there wasn't a lot of mass shootings yeah, back okay. then, right? But anyway, well, except and, Kent State anyway, was a mass anyway, shooting. Anyway, let, right? let me let me continue on yeah. here. I, yeah. Kent State was a mass shooting, right? Yeah, so uh, that was by government. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah it was. <laughs> that's true. But it wasn't a regular army. Mm. Well, I appreciate uh, you having this conversation with me and sharing okay. your opinion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have a good day, sir. Sure.